Welcome to the E-Academy. The Perfecta series devices have been in the Satel range for many years and are probably familiar to most of our viewers. However, in this episode, we will focus on the latest item in this product family, namely the Perfecta 64M control panel. In our previous materials, we discussed the features of the Perfecta series control panels and how to configure them. That is why we refer you to the series of episodes with numbers from 35 to 40. In addition, the Perfecta control panel operating with the Lunar Detector also appeared in episode 69, where we presented the control manner of a light source built into the detector. We encourage to watch the archive episodes not only those of you who are new to our products, but also those who wish to structure their knowledge on the Perfecta control panel's configuration. Especially because in the Perfecta 64M control panel, which we're going to discuss in a moment, a large part of the settings is configured in a manner similar to that shown in the mentioned episodes. That's right. However, although Perfecta 64M shares many features with its sister models, it offers much more than they do, so let's focus on discussing what makes it stand out. Okay, to begin with, I'll just mention that the system we'll be using in a moment is already pre-connected. When starting up the control panel, we activate the service mode using the pins and the jumper. The connection to the computer is made via a USB RS converter connected to the RS-232 TTL port on the control panel. The Perfecta soft program is running and communication has been established with it. Also, the identification of the connected modules was carried out. Now we will go through a number of functions and settings to highlight the differences mentioned earlier and also the strengths of the presented control panel. At the top of the software window, we can see that the control panel reports as Perfecta 64M. And to begin with, the name of the control panel model itself should suggest the maximum number of programmable zones we deal with in this unit. So we go to the Zones tab. And this is indeed the case. The list shows as many as 64 zones. We'd like to remind you that other Perfecta control panels have 16 or 32 zones each, depending on the model. There are eight wired zones available on the electronics board, and their number can be increased using INTE expansion modules, of which up to seven can be connected to the bus. Another new feature is the number of partitions to which zones can be assigned. Instead of two, which are present on the older Perfecta models, twice as many, namely four partitions, are available in the Perfecta 64M control panel. Notably, each zone can be linked to one, two, three, or even all partitions. In addition to this, each of them can be armed independently by selecting one of three modes. Here, without any change, we have full, day, or night modes available. By ticking the appropriate box in the program, you can indicate if a given zone is to be armed in a specific mode. Links to partitions can be set here, but you can also do so by going to the Partitions tab. Here, it is worth adding that, as far as zones assigned to more than one partition are concerned, they only become armed when all of such partitions are armed. To change this, you must select this option. The zone will then become armed as soon as one of the indicated partitions is armed. Now we're going to open the Outputs tab. Older Perfecta control panels have a maximum of 12 or, in the case of WRL models, 16 outputs. In this respect, Perfecta 64M also goes to a higher level, as it offers up to 64 programmable outputs. The electronics board features four outputs, or more specifically, two high current and two low current ones. The number of wired outputs can be increased using INTO or INTORS output expansion modules. There can be up to seven of these modules. And now attention please, Let's count the outputs. Four on the control panel board and seven output expansion modules with eight outputs each, giving a total of 60 outputs. However, 64 were mentioned. And yes, it all adds up. Well, four outputs, those with numbers from 13 to 16, are designed to operate with microsystems wireless sirens. About that, however, in a moment. Now let's have a look at the list of supported output types. Most of them are the same as those found in other Perfecta control panel models, but we can see the differences at the end of the list. We can select the thermostat type, which is designed to control heating or air conditioning. And below that, there is a pair of roller shutter outputs, i.e. roller up and roller down. The presence of such output types is a nod to those wishing to implement more extensive building automation functions than has been possible with the Perfecta control panels available to date. Speaking Speaking of the thermostat output, let's go on to the Functions tab and further on to the Thermostats tab. 
it is here that we can change the settings of the eight available thermostats in the control panel. Each of them can have different settings. This applies to temperature thresholds, hysteresis, or control timers and forcing outputs. We can also specify from which zone the temperature value will be taken. That's right, in order to have a temperature measurement and thus use the thermostat outputs, it is necessary to use any ABAX 2 device fitted with a temperature sensor. So you have to connect a controller for this radio system to the control panel, but we'll talk about interfacing with wireless devices in a moment. As for the principle of operation of the thermostat type outputs, this was discussed in episode 75 using the Integra Plus control panel as an example. Have a look, as the information it presents will certainly answer many of your questions. Now let's have a look at the Users tab. In systems based on Perfector control panels, there could be a maximum of 15 users plus service. With the Perfector 64M, it is possible to have more than four times as many, namely 62. By the way, in the visible table, we can see the column card. This is because the control panel can be fitted with the INT-CR, which is a proximity card arm disarm device. Using it, users can arm or disarm partitions or cancel alarms using proximity cards. Now we will go on. As we mentioned at the beginning, the identification was carried out and consequently, the keypads connected to the control panel were detected. In order to view the keypad settings, we need to open the Hardware tab. There we can immediately see the two identified devices, which by default have the names PRF LCD with the address number designation. However, if you click on each of them, you will learn what model of keypad it actually is. That's right, this is where the further strengths of the Perfector 64M control panel become apparent. Namely, in addition to the traditional PRF LCD keypads, it also supports the INT KSG 2R touch keypad models. Here, it is worth mentioning that we navigate between functions on these models differently than before. Instead of keys with up, down and right, left arrows, there is support for swipe gestures. And now for the most important thing. The Perfector 64M control panel can be operated with touchscreen keypads. We are talking about INT TSH2 and the smaller INT TSG2. Let's recall that we talked about these models of keypads and their programming in episodes 76 to 78. And even though at the time the keypad was connected to the Integra Plus control panel and its interface was configured in the Dload X program, we are dealing here with an almost same situation. This looks very similar in Perfector Soft, and the differences are due, among other things, to the arrangement of the buttons for the various functions. An important point here. The INT KSG2R, INT TSH2 and INT TSG2 keypad support macro commands. This means that by touching a key or icon on the screen, you can trigger a defined sequence of actions to be performed by the control panel. OK, we're going back to the hardware tab to select GSM phone. The available settings look similar to those of other Perfector control panel models, obviously those with an industrial phone module on the board. Again, there is support for two nano SIM cards. It is worth noting that the module used in the Perfector 64M can operate in 2G and 4G mobile networks. However, it does not support the slowly phased out 3G networks. Well, let's now go back to the area we discussed before. What if wireless devices need to be used in a given system? In this respect, the Perfector 64M control panel is very flexible. This is because you can choose and connect one of the devices that enable radio communication. Firstly, it can be an ABAX2 two-way system controller. You can choose one of the following models, ACU220 or ACU280. You connect them to the bus terminals on the electronics board. When it comes to the number of ABAX2 wireless devices, up to four PRF LCD A2 keypads can be installed in a system based on the Perfector 64M model and up to 48 detectors, sirens or other devices from this family. Here is an important piece of information. The PRF LCD A2 keypad features a proximity card, so it can be used similarly to the already mentioned INT-CR module. 
The second option available for the Perfecta 64M control panel to interact with wireless devices is to select the microsystem, that is to say, the same devices that are supported by the Perfecta WRL control panels. To this end, the Perfecta RF module must be connected to the 64M control panel. It is plugged into a special connector on the panel electronics board. If you select the option of devices using the 433 MHz frequency band, the system can operate up to four PRF LCD WRL wireless keypads, up to 64 detectors and up to four sirens. No matter which wireless system you decide on, ABAX 2 or Micra, each user can control system functions remotely using their own key fob. Obviously, the model of such a key fob must be compatible with the chosen wireless system. Right, and speaking of key fobs, in addition to the two wireless systems mentioned, we also have a third option. This is because you can fit the Perfecta 64M control panel with INT-RX-S, which is a key fob receiver module. It supports SATL key fobs using the 433 MHz frequency band. As for the number of key fobs that can operate with the Perfecta 64M control panel, regardless of the option, there can be as many as the number of users in the system. That is, as we said, 62 units. And finally, an important point. Only one of the previously mentioned radio devices can be connected to the Perfecta 64M control panel at a time. That is, one of the ABAX2 system controllers or the Perfecta RF module for micro wireless devices or the INT RXS key fob receiver expansion module. None of the devices just mentioned can be connected to the control panel at the same time. And that's all for now. Thank you and enjoy future episodes of our eAcademy. See you then.